Welcome to the San Fernando Valley Climate Reality Chapter Meeting. We meet monthly on the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, we meet from 7 to 8.30. We like to do a condensed business uh, section up front. And then we have our speaker and our guest speaker tonight is Senator Henry Stern. So we are so excited uh, to hear him and to talk to him about specific bills that we are very interested in and involved in. So um, welcome to you all. Uh, before we get started with our business, we like to do a land acknowledgement. And uh, I, in the process of our business section, I like to introduce as many of the um, of our chapter leadership team as we can. So I'd like to introduce uh, Sean Carlin. He's actually calling in from New York City. Hey, Sean, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Sean is our member mentor and he is going to read uh, the land acknowledgement. And as he reads that, I will share it on screen so that you can uh, read along. Go ahead, Sean. Thank you, Diana. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes and respects indigenous peoples as stewards of this land and the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. It acknowledges the history that has brought us to reside on this land, the colonialism that is present in our current systems, and calls on us to be mindful of our own present participation in it. We acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Tongva, Keech, Tatabiam, and Chumash tribes. And I'm personally right now on the uh, traditional, ter tr traditional territory of the Lenape tribe. Excellent, thank you, Sean. Now, as we segue to, let me just uh, uh, see if Senator Stern has joined the call. If you have, Senator, maybe you could say. Diana, just because, uh... The senator might be running late. I'm also happy to introduce myself and then also introduce the the com the new committee, which Senator Stern has become the chair of, which is directly related to the 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 climate reality team and the climate reality project. That would uh, be great, Ross. Thank you very much. Go yeah, ahead. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, introduce yourself. I'll, uh, I'll be happy to introduce myself. Hi, every hi everyone. Um, good evening, and uh, thanks so much for having us. Um, you know, I, I'm Ross Zell, and I started three weeks ago uh, for Senator Stern as his, as his climate policy advisor. And the reason why I was brought on is because as of uh, as of four or five months ago, Senator Stern became the chair of what is known as the Joint Legislative Committee for Climate Change Policies. And it's a it's a new committee. It's a committee that hasn't necessarily risen to the the level and, and where you poke regular folks outside of the Sacramento causeway are necessarily familiar with it because it's it's only been around for six years. Most of the standing policy committees in Sacramento have been around for as long as we've been passing budgets and as long as we've been making decisions about, about things in our state. So they've got about 140 years, 150 years a head start on, on our little committee. Um, and so the Joint Legislative Climate Change Policy Committee was created six, uh, six years ago as a result of the reauthorization of the, the state's climate cap and trade plan, essentially. They're the program that we know we know as the Climate Investments Program or the Greenhouse Reduction Fund Program. And so one of the things that the legislature wanted to do in reauthorizing it was kind of have a say in what comes next for our climate change policies. So both to say have a say of what comes next and also to have some oversight of how those policies are being implemented. And so what's a little bit of what the Senator and I are gonna try to work on over the next over the next year and, and, go, and going forward, we have, we'll have this uh, committee really ramping up in, per, in full over the summer and into the fall and really trying to look at some of the big challenges. So obviously, um, just like we're gonna talk later tonight about SB 539, and nature-based solutions in the Sepulveda Basin, we're gonna take a, a look at what we're doing statewide to integrate nature and think about our natural and working lands and rethink how we've been using our lands and thinking about in, in the natural infrastructure as part of our climate solution. And you know that relates directly to the fight that you folks are fighting in Las Virginas with the school districts. Um, and as somebody who has spent many, many hours on those artificial turfs, 
I, I, I can, I can wholly attest to the fact that it is not so, it is not so fun to have to feel 20 degrees hotter on the turf on a hot day. Exactly. Uh, um, and so, you know, some of the stuff that we're going to do at this committee is stuff that you probably, you folks are probably talking about quite a bit in your climate reality conversations. So how do we implement the, 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 bi the bipartisan infrastructure law or, uh, or the, you know, or the inflation reduction act? and all the money that comes to California and to different states for climate. And one of the things that we're really thinking about is, you know, how do we implement these dollars in a way that leverage our state's resources, leverage it. So we're building, we're building good jobs. We're building healthy communities. We're rethinking about, you know, you know, the, uh, a co the cost of living and who can have good career pathways in California and how do we actually thrive as a, you know, as our, as our cities and our regions, you know, we have uh, kind, of, kind of a multitude of transitions happening, whether it's the clean energy transition, whether it's the transition to kind of more of this dynamic energy market where we all get alerts on hot days to turn off our, our air conditioning to try to keep the grid going. And so we're going, we're getting smarter, but with that, we're also dealing with the impacts of climate change. And then the third one really is, is that we're going to have to evolve, you know, at how, how we think about our infrastructure and we're going to be transitioning away from a fossil based infrastructure to a clean energy infrastructure. And so we're going to have to do that in real time. We're going to have to figure out big, big policy choices and big policy decisions about how we think about our fossil infrastructure and how do we do that drawdown in a managed and thoughtful way. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, that's a lot of what we're going to try to tackle with this com this committee. We're going to talk a lot. Of, it's a bipartisan committee, so it's got five members of the assembly and five members of the Senate from all throughout the state, um, and it meets it, it meets on a you know meets on an on an ad hoc basis. We had our first meeting of the year in in March, and we talked a lot about the state's scoping plan, which is with the, at that out of the California Air Resources Board. It's kind of the, the state's roadmap to carbon neutrality. Um, that, that, new, that, that neutrality date is 2045. So we've got quite a, quite a ways to go. And we have a, a number of incremental steps that we have to hit in, in the interim. And, we, and we'll ultimately, one of the things that the Senator will talk about a lot is we can't wait too long. We can't wait to get to 2030, to 2040 or to 2042 until we hit that goal, we have to accelerate our progress and we have to be ambitious in the interim. And that's what, you're, what the Senator and, and I can talk a little bit about some of our other legislation that will raise the state's climate ambitions, um, both, this, both this year and going forward. And one of, the, one, of the things that we're, one of the things that we're really looking at is how do we leverage those federal dollars and also look at all of the myriad of programs that are coming out of Washington DC right now. It's going to take it's going to take a number of years for those programs to get off the ground. I don't know if folks are following um sorry, not sure how that happened. Go ahead. That that there's Can you back up just a second, Ross. I'm sorry, just to complete your thought. Sure. So let me let me take a step back. So um, the Biden administration is working on implementing dozens of programs as part of the Inflation Reduction Act. And as part of that, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to figure out which programs we can really look to leverage. Um, there's programs that we do not know very much about, and there's programs that we know a lot about, whether it's money for money for each of us in our homes to upgrade to heat pumps and put solar and put batteries on and help decarbonize our homes, whether it's the rebates for the electric cars that is getting, you know, a lot of the headlines and also, um, you know, drawing a lot of attention with how our automakers are going to manufacture electric vehicles in the future. But there's a lot of programs that are still very much being worked out. How do we reduce methane emissions from oil and gas facilities, oftentimes we'll hear every three months about, you know, a, a rogue operator in Texas or New Orleans or somewhere else emitting just massive amounts of methane and not following laws and not following um, what, you know, what they obviously should be doing, but there's not good oversight in those states. 
we're going to, you know, we're going to try to work on legislation that will help drive the market forward, sending clear price signals that we want the, you know, the cleanest, the cleanest possible program, the cleanest possible gas, the cleanest possible products, um, and that those companies need to disclose their emissions. And so we can talk a little bit about the kind of transparency laws that Senator Stern and Senator Weiner and Senator Gonzalez are working on as part of the climate accountability package that is in the, the legislature this cycle. Um, but, you know, it's really, a, it's really, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's an all hands approach right now. It's largely an approach that's going to take our, our administration, whether it's our folks at our Energy Commission, our California Air Resources Board, Public Utilities Commission, uh, independent service operator, all the folks who manage our grid, all the folks who are doing the build out of our electric vehicle and in charging infrastructure, our ports, our, our, the folks who move cargo by rail, we're all kind of have to kind of row in the same direction and implement at it at a lightning speed in order to meet the moment that we're, right. we're kind of living in. And, and so you've touched on a few things, Ross, that are on our list to address with the Senator. And one was a little bit of that forward, uh, forward thinking, forward looking, you know, how can we, you know, really maximize our efforts um, with all of the, you know, federal, state, local, uh, you know, entities and, and, uh, representatives. So that is one thing we wanted to address. And uh, I was wondering, Kathy, if you know, because you know what our chapter's legislative agenda is, are there, you know, we have specific uh, bills we want to discuss with the senator, but is there anything sort of in general that you might want to bring up uh, with well, Ross? Actually, something came up today that is of concern, which is, um, Southern California gas wanting to increase storage at Aliso Canyon instead of reduce gas there. Is is that a something that you can talk about briefly? So I'm gonna wait, I'll probably let the Senator, this is something we're watching incredibly closely. Let me just say that we've had conversations with the um, the president of the Public Utilities Commission last week. We were We were made aware of this last week. This is something that we're obviously very, very concerned about, and we're obviously watching very closely. We're also um, going to be asking for more information from SoCal Gas um, because at the same time as they're asking to increase storage, they're also undertaking a lot of maintenance efforts. And so we need to get clear signals and clear information from the utility about what is being done, how what is the timeline, and what assurances we, they can make that we're, you know, we're really going to be um, doing this the most prudent way possible. But um, but I, I will tell you that the Senator and I, I and our entire staff have um, had a number of conversations about it over the last um, 72 hours since we were really made aware of it. And we're, you know, we're working on our next steps and working closely with our legislative colleagues. Um, one of the things they didn't necessarily touch on is one of the things that we're going to work on in this committee is the fact that we have 37 new members of the legislature this year. Um, and is, we have 120 members of the legislature overall, so that is more than one quarter of the legislature is brand new. Um, and with that comes new staff, comes, comes a lot of education that needs to be done. And so it is, um, it is on me and in our, our, our team to do a lot of education about the work of Aliso Canyon because, uh, and we'll be working with assembly member Shivo and, and Pilar's team, We'll be working with uh, Senator Menjivar. We'll be working with many, many other of our colleagues to do the education because so many of our colleagues are so new that they haven't, they, they didn't live it. They didn't live, they didn't go through it. They haven't, they had their knowledge is maybe a couple news articles that they read at the time, but they, they live hundreds of miles away. And so they haven't experienced the direct impacts that you folks might've felt in the Valley. I'm just wondering, thank you, Ross. I'm just wondering, uh, Terry, since some of the people, uh, I'm not sure how much time we'll have to like lay out the entire foundation of the work you're doing in the Las Virginas School District regarding artificial turf. I wonder if you could uh, just give us a little thumbnail of what's happening, uh, what you're concerned about and, and what you're working on. And then we will do the follow-up uh, questions with um, Senator Stern. Okay, just briefly, uh, Las Virgins Unified School District is planning on putting this artificial turf in at six schools. 
and redoing an artificial turf at two. Um, the six schools include three elementary, two middle schools, and then one high school is getting an, an additional one. It already has an existing one. Um, it's for a cost of approximately $12.5 million. They're using Measure S bond money. They have not notified the parents. None of the parents know this is coming. Um, back in February, when I started to notice why people are walking on the little field at Chaparral, where I work, um, found out that they were actually measuring um, this company. But again, at that point, teachers, staff, no one knew, again, that this was coming down the pike. Um, so I'm actively trying to prevent it from being installed. I believe the contracts have probably been signed, um, but we're still trying to educate the district. We're trying to educate parents and uh, staff at the schools what's happening. Um, and I just was at the board meeting tonight and um, went over the, the problems with artificial turf at the board meeting for Board of Education. Can you tell us just a little bit about uh, SB 499 um, and, and why that could be helpful in this particular fight? Well, I can, but I think Ross probably could talk about it better than I can in Senator Stern. Um, Senator Stern actually co-authored this with Men Javar. And um, it looks at the fact that with climate change, we have extreme heat and schools have got to prepare. And so by 2025, they would have to have a extreme heat plan in place. 2027, they would have to implement it. And one of the things that I'm particularly um, noting is that they would not be able to put in artificial turf at that point because artificial turf, of course, is a heat sink. Um, they would have to provide cooling surfaces when they redid surfaces. Um, and then, of course, there's another bill, Assembly Bill 1423, which would prohibit schools in grades one through 12 from purchasing or installing uh, covered surfaces like artificial turf that have PFAS chemicals. Um, and that would be as soon as 2024. And you said tonight at the board meeting, you got some applause when you spoke. So do you think that that was just a brand new topic for some people that they were just totally unaware or? Well, the people on the board were not clapping. <laughs> They're looking very serious. And um, I got the impression the superintendent was kind of like, eh, it's not real, it's not real. Um, but the other people looked serious on the board. It was the people in the audience and it was like a full crowd that clapped. So. Oh. So the board oh. noticed that. That's great. Okay. Can, can I also add, yeah. Terry, that, that, that any of you who have people, uh, students at Las Virgin, in Las Virginies schools or know anybody um, who, who has children in Las Virginies schools, we need your help writing letters and showing up at school board meetings. So, and possibly social media that I would not have access to. Yeah. Okay. So, so we could... Kathy, I know you wrote something. Is there any particular schools or if you could like dial in where people would do that? Do they send it to the board? Would they write a letter and who would they send it to if they would like to, you know, send something? Um, Terry, what do you think? Um, I think at this point, if you'd like to have more information, you'd like to get involved, please put your name, put LBUSD in the chat. And we'll get back to you. And you can say maybe where you are. I mean, are you near Chaparral? Are you because the schools are Chaparral Elementary, Bay Laurel, Round Meadow. It's A.E. Wright Middle School, Astell Middle School, and the additional field is going in at Agora High School. Right. I see. Uh, Anne has put something in the chat. Anne, do you know about this? Do you want to um, add something to this? Anne Gall. Oh, uh, it was um, an old article linking uh, cancer with artificial turf. Yikes. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so when you put stuff in the chat, it's helpful if you just add a little word ahead of your, <laughs> to yeah. let us know what it is you're responding to. So if you say turf, and then uh, your your email, then we know how to, how to follow up. If you say, you know, uh, happy yeah. hour, let me, you are get together. <laughs> so we know that that's what you're interested in. That would be, uh, that would be very helpful. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate that update. Um, uh, Ross, have you heard anything from the senator? Or we, I, you guys need to know he is a brand new second time father. I think his baby is what, like two weeks old or three weeks old or something like that. Is I don't know. 
I think I think we we've crossed the one month mark. But oh, then, the, okay, so just into the one month. Well, that's still still pretty young. So but yeah, he's he's deeply outnumbered because uh, uh, he's got two under two. So it's oh. yeah. Okay, uh, that's a, um, that's a challenge. Yeah. Have have any any word from him? Is he going to be joining soon? Do you think? Yeah, he's hopping on now. Ah, there he is. Perfect timing. Hello, Senator. There you are. Uh, I am, Diana. Nice to see you. you. You too. Congratulations. Uh, I'm just going to spotlight you so everybody can see you. And congratulations on your second, uh, second baby in two under two. That's what Ross was just saying. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. this job, it's weird, like trying to figure out as a state senator, how to stop global climate change is somehow feels easier some days than like <laughs> being a new dad. I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. No, that's great. Listen, we've been really enjoying getting to know Ross and he has been giving us a great sort of introduction into some of the work that you've been doing. Um, yeah. And uh, before we dive in with you, our vice chair, Michelle Ringler, has a, a bio, we'd like to just make sure anyone who doesn't know who you are gets introduced to some of the many things you do. So give us a minute as we do a formal introduction. Go for it. Michelle? Okay. Thanks so much, Diana. So tonight we're honored to welcome Senator Henry Stern, who represents the nearly 1 million residents of the 27th Senate District since first being elected to serve in November, 2016. He's chaired the Senate Natural Resources and Water Committee since 2018, where he's worked tirelessly to bolster the state's wildfire preparedness, push to have the state address the climate change emergency and improve our democracy and fight to help some of California's most vulnerable members. He's also recently appointed as chair of the Joint Legislative Committee on Emergency Management. In addition, Senator Stern sits on the Senate's Budget, Environmental Quality, Judiciary and Energy Utilities and Communications Committees, as well as the Budget Subcommittee on Resources, Environmental Protection, and Energy. Please give a warm welcome to Senator Henry Stern. Yay, great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I think this is the third time you've joined us, and every time uh, you, you beat all records in terms of registration tonight. I think we had uh, uh, like over 90 people register for this, and so uh, uh, people want to know what you're involved in, what you're working on. We have some specifics, but I want you to catch your breath and feel free to uh, just ease into this before we die. Yeah, no, and what a what a cool cross section tonight. I mean, that's the everyone had sort of briefed me on how um, diverse of a group we've got statewide here too. I just can you give me a snapshot, or Michelle, or someone like what's range of communities? I know you know you're my hometown climate reality project, uh, but the the network is yeah. Give me a sense yeah. of. So yeah, so there are a lot of folks from San Fernando Valley. Uh, we have other folks uh, from um, from the San uh, Sepulveda Basin Coalition. I awesome. see friends from Moore Park. You guys yeah. can throw it in the chat too. I'll yeah, watch it. Yeah, throw it in the chat, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. Cool. San from, oh, uh, oh, oh, this is fun. A little yeah, a little round the horn. Venice, cool. You got it. Nice and, some uh, commerce you know, in there. From I see, but a very action, LA bunch. Yeah. Climate cool. Action California. We have somebody from Northern California. Yeah, and I'm paying attention to our flames in Glendale too. That's very important. Yeah. And, and Tahunga. Westside, the Venice area. Um, so yeah, lots. So it's pretty well. So Mary. Oh, and we got a little Silicon Valley too. I see yeah. Mary out there from uh from up north too. Yeah, so from Climate Action California. So uh cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of cross uh, pollination here. I love right? it. That's what we need. That's yeah, what we need. Exactly. And, you know, we're going to do something a little different to, uh, tonight, um, which is that there are two bills that we want to maybe dive into a little bit deeper, the yes. SB 539, Spoboda Basin, and then also the SB 499. Uh, but uh, like I said, I want to give you a chance to catch your breath. So one of the things we wanted to know is just like, what are you working on and what what's, you know, sort of on the top of your list? And, you know, as we always like to know, how can we help? Uh, so if you want yeah. to, if you want to and, get started and just sort of catch us up on what you've been doing, we can do that first and then dive into those. other. Yeah, topics. I'll be quick with that because I love the back and forth, too, here. And yeah, uh, really. the most important thing I've been doing these days is delegating and making really good hires. I, I figured out finally that, like, I can't fully 
be because I what wasn't in the bio is I'm a staffer at heart. That's sort of my background, right? I, those of you who know Fran Pavley from our communities, that was how I got into politics in the first place, or and certainly climate politics. And it was climate that pulled me into that work in the California legislature from being a staffer then to Henry Waxman before that and working on the big Waxman Markey thing from way back in the day, the only thing to ever make it out of the house with a real price on carbon, which we still haven't touched as a Congress. But so what I've learned though is, yeah, got to find a great team. And so we, this committee that I was, I, I fought to get the chairmanship of um, comes with some benefits of having a you know, specialist, like a sort of chief policy consultant. And then, and then I, at the same time, getting the CARB appointment, I, it sort of unified my purchase. So I, I, I now can access the technical staff at the California Resources Board and sort of really advance regulatory initiatives, almost like in parallel to the legislative, because the whole puzzle is about, you know, how to deal with that triangle between the courts the administrators and then the legislature, right? So a lot of it, you know, take a, take the natural gas ruling. We just had um, this past couple of weeks that overturned uh, Berkeley. Uh, big, big loss, it looks like initially for building decarbonization. But meanwhile, we've got two other sets of tools in the toolkit to tackle that problem. And so air boards pursuing regulations, CEC has code. So it, you can get hit in one arena and then sort of, find a new plan in another. So there's a there's a bill we're moving, I'm helping a few senators write on a neighborhood decarbonization and the idea of sort of pruning the gas system, finding areas where it's not really cost effective to keep building it out and actually dangerous to keep building it out, like ahem, Aliso Canyon area, and trying to sort of reduce demand enough so you can prune the system, in other words, and electrify pockets, not just everywhere all at once, and not sort of hodgepodge. But just to give you a sense of sort of how I'm approaching the job. And I now, I, it's really cool because it everything, we're trying to get our hands on anything that sort of needs help on many fronts. So helping the Air Board run advanced clean fleets and, and the locomotive rules and doing the biggest ever sort of aviation, industrial locomotive and truck, sort of that whole hard to, they call it hard to abate sectors. Then, but then, you know, at the same exact time, working on nature-based solutions and digging really deep on this, some of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight. And so it's the funnest job ever in my life. And my the best part of it now is we also have a lot of great senators. So a lot of my work ends up being the joint author, the co-author, but helping technical and helping people come up with strategies to deal with really hard political challenges or, you know, I don't want to say sneaky ways, but smarter ways to draft bills. So like not getting stuck, for instance, in the banking committee when you're trying to push corporations on carbon disclosure, which is happening also at SEC. We're pushing our package, but we're writing it through an emissions-based disclosure standard. So it all goes through Environmental Quality Committee, which as Senator Allen, shout out to the Venice, Calabasas, those folks. Sorry. And so... That's your new senator, by the way. So congrats to you. So just being a good passer, those of you who watch a little basketball or any other soccer or whatever, I, I'm that's the main job. So the big, the sort of signature piece Ross may have mentioned, but we're, you know, we are trying to up the the target for California overall for the climate program, sort of push the envelope and push the governor. And and but it's he's doing a great job. It's just uh it it needs pressure. So um that's the overall push. SB 12 is sort of the capstone bill to the whole thing where we're going to need a lot of help right now. And, um, but that's sort of the, oh, that's the umbrella. That's the AB 32 framework that we're trying to accelerate before 2030 and not sort of backload the emissions. So if you have that sort of as the big driver and that's the main bill, then a lot of the other stuff should sort of click into place. Okay. Um, how does the state procure its food? Uh, how does, you know, um, we, how do we manage cattle grazing? Uh, and, you know, are we letting some of the like biomethane into the low carbon fuel standard or not? And, you know, do dairies belong in the system or should they be on this? All these very nuanced ones. So we can go into turf and our nature based solutions in the basin. But I guess we're trying to stay just keep pushing the overall envelope. Right. 
on the finance side, look at what Congress is doing, look where the president needs help, right? We're pushing this disclosure framework in part to make things uncomfortable for the banking sector to say, hey, if you buck Biden's SEC disclosure rule, you're still going to have to deal with the state of California. So why don't you guys play a little smarter and stop undercutting all the federal regulation? So some of it's leveraging. Anyway, it's a lot of that sort of inside baseball that I enjoy and that's really I, so any, anything you guys are interested in or, or working on in climate, we're all we're sort of trying to be a one stop shop to be yeah. useful and creative for you. Well, that's it's a really interesting perspective. And, you know, the idea of really trying to figure out how to do it smartly uh, and, and work within work within the rules. You know them now. You've been there for a while. So now you can really put all of that. Uh, yeah, you. I'm like a, I'm going to be a senior senator soon. It's pretty weird. All right. You know, <laughs> that's I mean, great. I always thought I was the young. The young, young one. Yeah. Now you're like seven, seven years in. So exactly. well, why don't we go ahead and, and uh, uh, because I know the Sepulveda Basin, you know how hard we've been working on that the yes. past year. And we just, yeah, good. Let's, thank let's you. Get yeah. Thank you for, for what you've done and bringing this bill forward. And, yeah. uh, um, you know, just, I think it would be nice if you could just, just snapshot what the bill's intention is, because it's a little different, right? And uh, so what you're hoping to achieve with it, and then, um, you know, what the next steps would be in terms of after it passes through the Senate floor. Yeah, well, we've got to get it passed through the Senate, and we're sort of, you know, gently nudging maybe our way into the conversation. It's a jurisdictional thing to some extent, and sort of not abdicating or deferring jurisdiction on this one to say just be a city planning process over their buildings or just an army corps process to something that's you know let's just an integrated sort of approach and sort of using our state agencies of jurisdiction to be of value especially when it comes to nature-based solutions so that's all the bill really does right now I've said you know the state may assist um, it leaves it pretty open ended for them. I it could I may it might say shall assist. Someone will have to check me on may versus shall, um, or it might say shall assist to the extent uh, you know necessary or something. Um, I got to well, go back so, and look. But it, someone it, it, one of you guys to wonk out and go find right. The bill. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't have a lot of. Uh, I mean, there wasn't much problem moving through the Senate, and from what not I not policy think, committee, Diana, but but fiscal is where it's tricky uh, okay. because sometimes if this is a very tight and not good budget year, so if I'm telling the state to go do something that's going to cost however much, then I got like I'm going to be. It's going to be a little bit of a tough time just to say fiscally we can afford to spend DWR and the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy's time with LA. But that's why I'm also, and I haven't I haven't publicly announced any of this yet. So it's a little sneak preview to you all, but we are sort of prioritizing and putting as one of our sort of capstone budget items for the um the office. Uh it is, is a sort of bolstering of the planning process that we we still don't actually that's sort of what I want to talk to you all about tonight is what what should we be doing and where where do you where do you want to go here so it's a little bit of a good time for us to listen and do our some of our planning but we I think we're we're going to be able to get another similar maybe bigger grant like what Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy uh, put out there uh, and and sort of had a couple different phases too some went to city and some went to another consultant, but that um, maybe look into conservancy or someone like that to what's next in this process to keep dreaming big, I guess. Mm -hmm. are, th are there going to be procedural limitations to having some of these broader, very exciting solutions that I think some of you have been working on that they say, well, yeah, but we're already in the design process and we haven't scoped out that kind of feasibility analysis. So we we'd need another, you know, $7 million for that. So we can't do it. And I want to come into that conversation and say, no, you can. Here, here's I'll meet you halfway. Let's get you half of that, and some, you know, have armies take split the other half with the city. Or you know, so I'm going to be. I don't want to have excuses about like what we, you know, no can do. I said yes, we can. You know, so, so that's that's the other piece of my puzzle. There's the bill that we got to get out of this committee and and ask Anthony Portantino to let loose because he's the fiscal hawk of the Senate. He's the appropes chair. 
So those of you in like Tahunga and Glendale, I think that's your senator. Yes. That Portentino is the key to letting um, our, our bill to the floor. It'll pass the floor flying colors. There's no issue there. It's the it's that fiscal. So I sort of don't have the money quite yet. So it's a cart a little before the horse, but I think I think I'm going to be able to buy time with it now, especially if you guys can pitch in and just let them know it's important to not just our little part of the valley, the Lake Balboa sort of community, but that that broader, you know, out to the East Valley, out to Glendale, out to, you know, and sort of regionally, well, we know, we know from a uh, species perspective, it's nationally and perhaps internationally significant as well as a hub. So it's yeah. and for just all to explain LA. that value. Yeah. Okay. So we could help by reaching out to Portentino yeah. and letting him know how, how, how much we would like his support. Okay. Yeah. And they'll throw his info in the chat. He, he likes to hear it. He actually likes district. I can, I can call him. And then um, uh, just, you, you know, the um, Assemblyman Gabriel, you know, the basin is in his district. Uh, uh, Senator Min Minjavar, are, are you getting a lot of support from local representatives or are they not? Not, I mean, not a lack of support, just, you know, we're doing a lot of legwork right now, I guess. That's the, that's the way I'd say is like, I, I don't see it sense any aversion to it, but, but um, I mean, my fantasy scenario is that I've got all jurisdictions working hard so that we could get, say, a round table together where it's not just Jesse and Caroline, but then it's the new council member for six, the uh, Nithia, and uh, and our members of Congress in the relevant, and just let's at the at the electeds level have a little bit of a principles roundtable where we, we say, "Isn't this great? Are we all going to work together and and work on our respective agencies and sort of try to coalesce around a simple version of the vision a little bit and." So anyway, I, I would love that help too. And it might work best initially if I can, if it's just that level, like if it's staff and the members and we can get cohesive, but we also then could zoom that out to say, and then we should all probably do a community meeting at some point too. It's just not everyone loves just diving into community meetings and being like, hey, I'm an open book, you know, <laughs> lay it on me. I, I'm a little unorthodox that way. So, but Anyway, that that would help too. If you just say, "Hey, are you guys working on this? You work, reach out to Senator. Have you reached out to Senator Stern's office? I know they're super busy on it and trying to find money and trying to." So just set those nudges in a friendly way. It's not like um, it's not again. There's no aversion to anything. It's mostly just um, I won't have as much pull, say, with Army Corps or with City of LA, just right. by the nature of where I sit. Um, yeah, and I think. If we get those members to sign my budget request, we're final. We want to polish it up actually after tonight and a few more conversations. But once we sort of formalize that letter, then you you all could say, "Hey, and by the way, sign on to that our basin letter." And okay, well, so that'll be another nice to do, but not ripe tonight. But right, that'll be ripe relatively soon. Okay, keep us in the loop and let us know uh, when you. Yeah gotten to that point. And uh, one of the things from the bill that uh, the way I read it was that uh, this, this support for nature-based solutions would be available if asked, if called upon. And okay, what yeah, I, that was why I was, you, that's why I was parsing the, the okay. phrasing with you. Uh, did anyone? You, you did, just sort of said, you, you were taking a more leadership role where you were like thinking that you would step in and say, hey guys, we're here to help you connect these dots. Uh, I'm going to do that in the, in the most generous way I know how. Okay. I'm going to do that without, you know, there's easy roadblocks to, to there's easy objections to say, well, you're, whose turf is this really? And we could say, well, we assert jurisdiction over this area that's, you know, cuts right. off here. Or whatever. You know, we're gonna have our own separate independent planning process. But I think the better approach is we have a great new uh, deputy mayor over at Bureau of Engineering and Randall Winston. That guy is creative. He ran strategic growth council. I think this mayor is gonna be excited about doing something there. We have brand new politics, hopefully emerging out of CD6 that give us space and interest. And I really hope you all um, just engage in that process, right? And just make whoever it is you're supporting or whatever, if you're just be engaged there and be visible, that'll really, really help. 
And okay. then I don't have to be too heavy handed at that point, but this is my diplomatic version of heavy hand. Okay. <laughs> and you are very diplomatic. We know that um, about you. Um, I know there, uh, we have a few people on the call that might have specific questions. Uh, I did not close the chat because we were taking a different. Uh, yeah, I love seeing it, by the way. I've been watching yeah. it and good. Yeah, good. so if someone uh, has a question uh, that they would like to pose to the senator regarding this particular bill, uh, before we uh, switch gears and go on to the next one, please um, raise your hand or open your mic. Let me hear from you. Anybody? Okay. Let me just, Great. I'm looking here. What's this, uh, the AT project someone said? Oh, that's the artificial turf. That's the, oh, that's the other bill. topic. Hey, yeah, do you want to touch that one real quick? Unless yeah. people, do, if you want to dive into Sepulveda, we can do that. Or we can also, either way, if you okay, want to hit but, that, because that one I actually had questions I know less about and I'm like, I don't know. Curious, yeah, so. let, let's do that. And then as questions come in, you can... Uh, you and know, I, yeah, exactly. I can circle back to other stuff too. So I'll great. keep an eye on the chat. That's great. So um, one of our, um, our leadership team members, Terry Saucier, is, uh, uh, also teaches in the Las Virginas School District. Terry, do you want to say hello and just uh, uh, chime in for a second? Hello. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, yes, Las Virgins Unified School District is going to install artificial turf, brand new fields at six. Yeah, holes. I saw that. So six so, fields, right? And, and all and and what's the what I couldn't didn't get from the brief is what's the material, Terry? What's what is the stuff there? It's from using? Hellas C Construction. Okay, I'm just so they're like while a, you talk here. So. They look like you know they're some international, national, huge company. I think like Texas, Nevada. Okay. Um, I can, you know, I have the contracts, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm so just reading along here because I, I don't know them. a lot. It's does it contain PFAS or not? Yes, all artificial turf contains PFAS. All does. That all was my and they question. acknowledged so, right because I sent a letter to the district. They uh, the district sent me in this kind of lame response, but um, they admit that they have PFAS chemicals in their product, but they try to attribute it to the lubricant oil to make the product. So yes. All artificial turf currently has PFAS chemicals in them. So, but are they saying that there isn't PFAS in the final product that perhaps the production process re requires PFAS, but will they argue back that the actual turf no. itself? No. No, it's funny. They said that um, the only reason might, we might test for PFAS is because of the production. And then they went on to say how PFAS chemicals are found everywhere. Ah, like, so it's okay now because it's in everything. So it's sort of, they have a catch-all too. They say, yes, mm -hmm. it's in this part of the process, but it's everywhere. Uh -huh. And have they talked, have you seen these stories about them having to actually go water the turf because it gets so hot, it becomes like uh, a health hazard for Yes, Yeah, so people? it gets too hot. Um, there's the PFAS chemicals. Um, they're, can of course, uh, cancerous. They're endocrine disruptors, sure. neurotoxins. I just wonder on the front, the water, the water hook. We don't have like great regular. Look, we're trying to pass some legislation, and I think one of you all mentioned uh, there was an assembly bill that's working its way through. Hopefully, on that front, I think Pilar Shivo fourteen twenty three. Mm -hmm. That's the that's AB fourteen twenty three, right? And then yeah. we have a heat one. I'm helping Carolyn Menjivar on on the Senate side, but different. Different ways right. of going. And we mentioned issue. that, right? So we mentioned that to the district. You know, hey, look, so at, that's that's legislation pending, though. That won't that won't get them as nervous as if you. Uh, what I wonder is under the Las Virginis Water um, uh, Metropolitan Water District, what the current sort of commercial or school use requirements are. If they're assuming zero water use on it that might not be actually consistent with what practices. So you might, have you thought about that hook at all of the, of the, that they actually will have to water? It's not a zero water facility. They just told me that it reduced water by 10% that the school I'm at, Chaparral, um, has $2,000 in overage a month. Um, but I don't know what the total cost of their water is. I don't know what that really means. And okay. they weren't forthcoming about that. Um, so yeah, to go back to them and say, you'll have to water it. I mean, I'm at elementary school. You know, it's plenty hot enough. So if the blacktop's 120, this artificial turf could be 120 to 150. 
right? On a 90 degree day. And, you know, I talk, the kids will have nowhere to go and there will not be one real surface at that campus after they take out that one little bit of green. Well, that was the other one I was going to ask about is on the, the school standards, the CDE standards on the heat side, we've been trying to actually change the public health standards there too. Anyway, it's something that uh, I hadn't heard about until you put it on my radar. So, and this network did, so it's really appreciated. And I'm, I'm, I want to pull that thread a little more, make maybe a couple phone calls um, and see how far along is it? That was the other thing. I'm pretty sure they signed the contracts. Uh So I think it's like written in blood, you know, Uh but um, still I want to call parents don't know about it. They didn't inform the parents. Teachers didn't know about it. Staff didn't know about it. And um, until I sent a letter to the district, then they just finally started doing a few little videos for staff to know that this is coming. And but parents still board? do not know. What are the what are the school board members saying? Have you talked to any of them? Um, just in writing, and then they gave okay. me back this lame artificial turf brochure like response about the water, and then they tried to tell me the grass is dead when in fact it's been green the whole year and kids are playing on it. Um, so I was I at their board meeting I still tonight. Know on that uh, that school board, I'm just I'm googling again because it turned over again last cycle do you remember who you were in touch with there um i I sent the letter to the whole facilities committee which was essentially a school board and then tonight i was at their board meeting and i presented at their full board meeting and are there parents who are going to be engaged i mean are there other folks who are sort of i'm trying they try to tell me not to talk to anybody oh but no one (laughs) but when you gave your presentation did you get a uh i got a the people in the audience clapped and the board looked very serious Right. So there you go. But so it's those people who are going to have your be be your best advocates. You know, if it's a parent or you have a few parents interested, you sound like you've got enough technical know how to help them. But you almost like go to work for some some determined parents. You could talk to who you're allowed to talk to whoever you want. There's no rules about that. You know, it's a little bit about the timing, too. Right, Terry, because they have plans, I think, in in Jan in June to get started on it. So is there anything that can be done? you know, from your, you know, from your office, anything that you can do to like say, hey, are you guys aware of this bill that's going to make artificial turf sort of obsolete after 2024? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, that's what I was saying. I can follow up with that. uh, Yeah. Call Dan or I know Dan's still Dan. Yeah. It's still Dan. So I'm happy to call Dan and ask him what the deal with it all is. But yeah, again, I think the best homework there is, and I heard from some of your parents. Mm-hmm. Right. And the other thing is, I don't believe they did an ER, EIR. They didn't do an environmental impact report or a study. That's interesting. And there's four yeah. creeks around Agora, and there's one oh. around AE Wright. Right. I mean, certainly if they're, yeah, if they're violating Clean Water Act, uh, or, I mean, or stormwater, I mean, that's the, like an MS4 permit kind of thing. Like, so, but they're usually pretty diligent. I mean, I doubt... There must be, there must have been some a, approval of this a while back that cleared the way to be able to do this expeditiously. I'll have to look into it more, but. From bond money, I think. Yeah. Oh, is it from past bond funding? Is that what it is? And then there's like some streamlined process. It's, it's an interesting mix of past bond money and then uh, Measure S, which just passed, which gave them $340 million. Got it. Right. But I can follow details with you later. Yeah, good. Um, well, thank you. I, we'll, we'll reach out and see what's that. going on there. And uh, if, if again, if you got any school board members or parents that you, you end up getting a warm lead from, those those are uh, I can that'll help me talk to Dan. A lot of people are nervous. Um, when I talked to PFC presidents at the our my school and a couple more, they pretty much told me that they have no say in the matter, and um, I think they're afraid to upset the district. Mm-hmm. Do you think letters from people who may might have gone to school there or, or have lived close by, would yeah. that be helpful? I, I don't know why. I mean, I don't mean to downplay it, but like, can't be that scary. I mean, moms are pretty big. I'm scared. People. <laughs> I, I don't think there, there's going to be. I work there and I'm scared. <laughs> well, I mean, about the PFAS, I get it, but not about speaking up with the school district. I mean, this is like. This no, seems but like teachers won't speak up. Teachers are afraid to speak up. They think they feel fear for their jobs. Really? Um, I think parents are afraid. They don't want to piss off the district. Oh no, they're they're. I think they're afraid. That's kind that of the seems feeling they have. The parents I know in Las Virgins, they always seem willing to piss off the district. I mean, that is like a very. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, 
thankless job of administering over there. It just feels like an it, it's a it's an ornery in a good way. It's an ornery bunch typically. So that's what I'm like. I'm surprised that there's no whatever rabble rousers within the ranks who want to sort of help elevate it to Dan or to want to or get a champion get. I don't know what you're, yeah, I'm looking up at the board members, but find one person on there as a champion to kind of make staff report on it or bring back something. Um, let's try. No, yeah, um, so let's see. Uh, Angela Cuppel. Yeah, Leslie Stein's the president right now. So yeah. So anyway, I'll I'll try to see what 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 the deal is. And you guys send me a nice memo on that. So um, okay. happy to follow Thank on. you. Thank you very much. And I yeah. just want to uh, ask Kathy Schaefer, who is our legislative co-coordinator. She has a few questions. about. I hear Kathy on phone calls in the <laughs> Senate quite often. She's one of my favorite names to just pop in. I, I, it's good to see I, you, by the way, Kathy, like to actually look at you. But like, and by the way, I wish we could do it over Zoom in the Senate too. I wish it would be like. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really annoyed with the assembly committees who are not allowing call-ins right now. I'm really, that's my, my mission this year it's it, not okay it, it needs to be in the legislature exempted itself from all the covid era sort yeah. of new tech so we require counties to do it and we're actually going to renew that law to say counties special districts school districts they can all do it but the legislature still exempts itself so you should yeah. poke us on on that one i i i railed on it on the floor i'm like this is embarrassing yeah, what, we can't handle Zoom where the California State Legislature like where it's that scary to everyone. No, you know, I get, I I get it's it's very time consuming. I, you know, I, 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 my point is it's not more time consuming than the phone line process. I actually think it would be better organized if you just did hand raising. Like I've been in very large Zooms, and there's a way to anyway. Anyway, yeah. well, I wanted I wanted to to see if you can give us a quick update on 261 and what our talking points should be when we start making our phone calls it's it's a i've been trying to figure out what that should be because i thought the sec rulemaking was going to drop by now and so that was going to color our advocacy i think we have to advocate now as you know we don't know whether it will be strong enough to cover uh sectors like private equity mm -hmm. um like um the regional banking, um, the large credit unions, and also the corporate side. So, like, there's going to be holes in the SEC process. Can you can you just back up like one step for people yes. who might not know about? Sorry, just you, give it like so a sorry. So, so this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of climate disclosure. And remember, I those of you who were in the weeds with me there. Uh, the banking committee is a hard committee. So we wrote a climate disclosure, a carbon disclosure bill to go uh, as sort of a package this year around issues like divestment. And um, it's built really on a federal framework where the Biden administration currently has a rulemaking pending at the Securities Exchange Commission to tell the banks and large public companies, public companies uh, that are listed on exchange, uh, to disclose material climate risk in a nutshell. And there's a lot of pushback on the scope of emissions that they want to disclose. Has anyone ever heard of scope three emissions? Any real, that's like a, that's like, okay, that's a layer of Sadly. climate wonk. Yeah, there you go. I'm like, those who know scope three, no. Um, scope three is basically like, yeah, it's, it's that you've got, um, you've got a, emissions embedded essentially in what you do that come from other places. So there was a factory that made all of your shirts and that factory itself, like the shirt itself might not have a large climate footprint, but the supply chain that brought it to you, the cotton that was grown, all those sort of inputs that get that from a pair to a sweater, to a car, to a, it's, it's essentially, especially in goods, it's the whole embedded carbon footprint that goes all the way up that supply chain. And it, that's why it's a little tricky. And the corporations play games with us sometimes when they're carbon neutral, because depending on what kind of emissions you measure, you could just limit it to like, well, what were the emissions at, you know, just that, the sweater making facility, right? And you could say, well, we've, we're a zero emission facility, so therefore it's carbon neutral activewear. But 
you then know, well, except for everything that came from India, China, Africa, you name it, right? So it's forcing these large multinationals to disclose their entire framework, which makes them actually have to go into their contracts, their supply contracts, and start to know more about these countries that aren't disclosing emissions within the UN process. Like, you know, if you're run on Russian oil, like what is that footprint, right? You can tuck, you can hide emissions essentially right now. We're gonna force it into the light. Biden administration is doing a phenomenal bang up job. They are taking tons of heat. There's a whole battle on the Hill raging. There's about 26 state attorneys general that are suing the administration from all the red states that are saying ESG is like woke capitalism. Those of you who heard these stupid talking points, there's a guy running for president on this whole platform of like, you're going to ruin capitalism by making, you know, everything have to take climate as a factor. Um, and meanwhile, the their plan is to force all the private sector to bury their heads in the sand when it comes to climate risk. And so ironically, the banks are actually suing BlackRock and the banks are suing some of these attorneys general and saying, you can't boycott us just if we're doing carbon disclosure. So they want to do some carbon disclosure because their shareholders want it. But on the other hand, they don't want to do as much as Biden does. And then we want them to do even more. So my bill says in California, it's not just if you're a public company, it's if you're a private company too. So then we cover real estate, then we go into private equity, then we reach into hedge funds. That's where there's big hidden bucks. I'm playing with the big boys with the finance world and we are very outgunned on it. It is a hard bill. Uh, it's not like sexy climate politics often. It kind of, you kind of get lost in the weeds, but actually like what's in your wallet, like what's behind the money even, forget your sweater, your dollars themselves, your bank, right? You don't want to be complicit in furthering a fossil future. So that's really the big game here. And and uh, we'll see. Uh, so the best thing to do right now, Portantino killed it in his committee last year. And it was one of my most frustrating moments with him. Uh, and we're bringing the same bill back. So we, 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 I got the insurance commissioner to adopt, I uh, worked with him to adopt so now the insurance industry is under the framework. So we actually, we dealt with that piece. So now I just have to fight with the banks and not with the insurance company. So that was a good job by Ricardo Lara, but now that's the bill and uh, it's before him in committee and it's a high, high priority for us. And there's a big coalition behind it too. Um, a lot of youth climate justice folks are involved. There's a big coalition of me, Senator Lena Gonzalez, Senator Scott <laughs> Wiener and a whole sort of coalition. Alsters even is supporting our bill. So those of you teachers yeah. out there, your retirement dollars, there's a fight over whether they're gonna fully divest, but at least they're saying disclose your emissions. So they're supporting the bill, but it's, uh, yeah, we're fighting the finance industry and they're basically gonna say we're preempted and we're only subject to Biden's rules. And then they're gonna go try to undercut Biden's rules. And then, yeah, we're gonna be left in the dark still. So we got to fight on this one too. Those are the two biggies, um, getting that out and uh, and trying to get, um, get our Sepulveda Basin bill sort of pumped up. Right. Right. Can, can you give us a quick update on SB 795, the HVAC installation tracking? I think, on? look, that one has a much stronger coalition just for raw Sacramento politics because we've got labor and environmental folks involved. Anytime you have that puzzle, and so we have sheet metal workers and electricians who want H, you know, your AC to be installed well also. They, they don't like the sort of fly-by-night electrician contractors who do shoddy work. So this one, I've got NRDC and uh, some of those unions involved. And so we've been doing it. It's been pretty smooth sailing from a sort of coalition perspective. The hard part there is uh, tracking all these AC units. Like I'm literally, I'm having to go, I'm having to go deep into the air conditioning industry and under and home heating industry and learn how the manufacturing process works, and especially now with the IRA, and those of you who follow heat pumps, and I don't know how many of you have looked at your house and see if you run on gas or on electric, but I'm really into, that's that neighborhood decarbonization pruning of the gas system that I talked about. The ACE, how you heat and cool your home is what will enable that large scale decarbonization. So if we in the Valley, for instance, didn't run on gas, 
and we could heat our homes with really good electric AC and heat pumps, we could shut down Aliso Canyon and no one would be the wiser. So it's part of a puzzle that starts with the most basic thing, which is let's get you an AC unit that works, make sure it's, you know, not some weird aftermarket thing that you don't really know what you're getting and that's sealed up right. They say about, uh, it's a crazy number. It's like, I think 30% of installations are done improperly and, and aren't like up to full code. So like you're like, I mean, three in 10 chance, you got a bad job on your hands. To, so and anyway, just, we'll hopefully deal with that. And I think heat to me, heat's the big, our big injustice for the Valley. I think that heat and to, so appreciate Terry, your advocacy around uh, AstroTurf, but it, you know, it goes beyond that. That's where Caroline and I, the amazing new Senator for the San Fernando Valley. Um, those of you who get to have her or have her now, I thought I was like young and passionate. She like blows me out of the water. Um, but she, I was really glad she took on the heat and is doing it in a little bit of a pro provocative way. She's not, she's not a shy person. She was Marine. She's like, Carolyn Manjavar is not, it's so cool to see this like, I don't know. I was almost too deferential. When I watched Senator Menjavar do it, she's like, let's go, you know, <laughs> right out the gate. She's just, it's very special. Um, she's going to be a, a great member for many years to come, but she's taken on heat in the school systems, especially, um, and looking at what, you know, what is LAUSD doing about blacktop and trying to sort of push a little harder, maybe not just be incentives, but maybe have a stick too to say you have to have a heat plan and you have to keep your kids safe. And so it's a good hammer, I think, right now to have and sort of force some change with the kind of frustrations people like Terry are having. But you go, you know, those of you who live in the Valley, like go to any, especially LAUSD, but even beyond, um, it's dangerous to go to school, you know, on those days. It actually is dangerous. And that's yeah. the that's the really bad thing. So you mentioned electrification, just so uh, yeah. our members know, and you as well, uh, Senator, our chapter co-hosts with the Orange County Climate Reality, a monthly show on going electric. It's the second Monday of every month, and it's called the Ask Sean Show. And Sean Armstrong from Redwood Energy. Oh, I know Sean Armstrong. You know Sean? Oh, he's, he's he was one of my, he was an evangelist for me way back in the oh, day. Oh, fantastic. Well, it's so much fun. What we a fun show. You know, I want to get on the show and just gripe about trying to fix my AC. Okay. And like, that's no, it. I really, I got a, and I have a busted study. water heater right no, now. No, that's it. Like, so we do a case study. We invite people to send us in your problem. Perfect. I'm gonna have my actually my wife will do it with me because she's the daughter of a plumber and she's like what do we okay, do well, we have <laughs> gas I know we can't do the gas but it's so tricky with the thing and uh, uh, so okay we'll, we'll I come just, on one of these I Mondays just here. in there yeah I'll make sure Good. your your team knows when it's coming and we'll, okay, get, you, we'll get you on the show that'll be great great um so um so yeah just looking at at time we uh, one of the things that we sort of discussed ahead of time as a topic we wanted to ask. We'll ask that and then we'll just head to the chat for follow-up. But okay. what are your thoughts about water scarcity and solution? Water is one of the big issues that we have taken on uh, as a priority for not just our chapter, but the entire California Coalition of Climate Reality chapters. So, you know, that's, I know that's a long range uh, thought, but you're, you're good at that. You, you no, it's not, it's not that long range. It's, it's pretty, um, it's, it's, it's very rough and tumble politics that are very current and, and real on a couple bills that like, I mean, very simple things like, okay, we're having, our drought is in in is gone for now. Um, we're back to other levels now. We have flood conditions. Um, the water system isn't resilient on either end, but we know, for instance, like our groundwater has not caught up, and so we're still even if we're out of drought, we're still in an unsustainable yield when it comes to the rate and sort of um, sort of uh, unregulated capitalism, if you will, that sort of old school, he who has the longest straw. Did anyone ever see There Will Be Blood? Anyone ever see that? Daniel Day-Lewis, but like an oil, the first oil guy in uh, in California, but originally it was about water um, when uh, Upton Sinclair wrote it. And uh, the, the idea of it just having the longest straw and having no, like, 
by 2028, we will have statewide regulations on groundwater. But until then, it's sort of this race of well right dominance that tends to favor very large corporate agriculture interests. And that this this flood season sort of has glossed over that or flooded over that, if you will. So it's sort of hiding beneath the surface. But just keep with the water analogy that that underlying crisis still remains. The subsidence still remains because you can't recharge groundwater in three months. That's I mean, the basic geology of our land, especially the loam and all these sort of salty the, the soils of our San Joaquin and Central Valleys, they they're look at Tulare Basin right now. Has anyone seen the, the the images of that? That is that is was a dust bowl, and now it is a total flood zone because it is not permeable, right? It, it we're trying to do targeted now groundwater recharge, but the pace is doesn't keep up. So there's still sort of a. a there was a Bennett bill, Steve Bennett's a, a great new member out of Ventura County. Bennett bill died in the Senate last year um, that would have stopped folks from at least have, giving counties authority to say you can't just punch a hole wherever you want it, um, even if you have the land rights, like you still have to get some kind of county permit. Ag killed that in the Senate last year. So Steve's bringing it back. We're going to need help there. The former iteration was 1051. Staff will have to help me or someone will have to help me on what that is. But if those of you water enthusiasts, this is actually a really good time to, to try to finally win over some of the greediest parts of corporate agriculture. Because there's a lot of great small farmers too, who were on our side who were like, this isn't fair at all, right? I'm not Boswell or I'm not, you know, uh, the Palm Wonderful, right? I'm just like, I got 40 acres of oranges. I need water too. So it's not anti-ag, it's just anti-superpower ag. but um, We'll let you know what what bill that is. So that's one big one. Um, and yeah, within LA, it, it's like, it's a good time, I think. Look, just like it's a good time to kind of, you want to regulate in times of plenty. It doesn't hurt as bad, right? So if you can, this is a time of there's too much water. Well, great, let's do some tighter water regulations in the spots we need them, right? So in some ways it doesn't hurt as much. Um, it's also a good time for investment and we want to do, an entire recycled water system within the LA basin. I mean, that's really that vision that Garcetti had a brilliant sort of target for us by 2035. And what now happens is we just got to go get smart financing together. So put things like Measure W at the county level together with um, with city money that is out there on parks and rec and places that we can actually do groundwater storage and groundwater recharge or <clears throat> the Sepulveda Basin. Um, to actually recharge the valley aquifer, right? So the access points to our groundwater recharge are everywhere, but also there's going to be some infrastructure stuff too, right? Like, can you get a Las Virginis system to be able to uh, not just have to pull off the state pr water project, but can they pull off the recycled water from the valley? And do we need to build a new pipeline there? Or even this pure water project that's going on there, which is hard stuff, but the Calabasagura residents out there are going to be the first sort of all recycled municipal system very soon if we keep that project going. But uh, we need more of that. Uh, and the last thing is like, water doesn't move like power. Like, you know, the power grid kind of, you just kind of electrify everything everywhere. You charge the grid and it flows around, but it goes moving the speed of light, right? It's very, very fast. Water moves very slow. It's much, much heavier than light. Right. So you got to pump it up. You got to pump it down. That's why we spend 20 percent of our energy in California just moving, heating, treating water because it's just like a big thing. So right now, all the water that sort of comes from east of the or beyond the 405 um, sort of uphill, if you will, way up north, like Colorado River is all gravity based. There's nothing that can sort of pull it back to the valley. So one of the thoughts is, can we create a sort of reverse flow and try to get that water that's sort of flying out to the sea recycled and pushed back up the 405 essentially and land it back in these sort of pockets. And anyway, so that's some of the hot local water stuff going on. And thank uh, you. But yeah, well, any other questions on that? Happy to. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. just looking at the time, you know, and we're sort of like at the end of the time and you yeah. 
stayed a little longer. Um, I, I know somebody had their hand up. I don't know if you have time for another. Hey, Karen, time. I see Karen. I'll, we yes. can do that. Um, Let's do that and we can wrap it up. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so briefly about the water, I see so many asphalted open spaces in and around uh, Glendale, and I've um, approached the city um, manager to to see if they can undo, like take out as long as there's no need for this huge parking lot. There's one car every like once a week parked there, and this is all so valuable to open up and let the ground soak up the water that's coming down so heavily. And <clears throat> there is no response. And I was curious if there's anything you can do. There's another. Um, irrigation system that's underneath, you know, like that if the all the farmers would use that, then that would uh, prevent all this overspraying and evaporation. So that would really help. I'd and be the, curious. The, idea was the vertical farming, like bringing farming indoors to make it more controlled and um, like getting it out of the, the sunlight, you know, where yeah, well, it's going to burn up in the, in the heat. They've certainly found a way to do that with cannabis. So you'd think they could do it with cucumbers, right? Um, <laughs> so true. Exactly. There's a way. There's a yes, way. It's just got to exactly. be, it's the value of water. It's how you yes, price it. how you and, use it because um, it then it recycles and you don't lose it. And it's very and, expensive for the those urban farms to get their water rates at sort of municipal rates. They're treated almost like big agriculture operations and anyway there's a rate issue underlying that but i would i would i would say maybe pull the thread and look at the stormwater regulations that's the regional water quality board not uh -huh. the city those uh -huh. are the folks that the cities often sue or are really really mad at who tell them your stormwater runoff is polluted uh -huh. and, and there's been a sort of history of litigation i think glendale at, but all of la county essentially um, getting sued by the state and regional water boards uh -huh. who were saying all this runoff from exactly the kinds of parking lots you're talking about are now becoming a water hazard all the way down to the ocean. Yeah. That's our hook. So mm -hmm. I'd be curious if regional water quality, like okay. what the status, it's called an MS4 permit. It's a stormwater okay. permit. Um, okay. You should, what there's, a lot of places tend to be out of compliance, looking for ways to get into compliance, especially if it's something as big as a city, if a city or a county area needs to get into compliance, they can start to value a project like that differently. And it'll, you can get, you can cut the, like they don't want to, like a, a parking guy is not going to want to do that job for you. You can go to the parking director and he's going to say, no, I don't want, I just want to run my parking lot. Like I don't, I don't do that. But if you then, if environmental compliance is telling parking, hey, actually, we could maybe go to regional water, they might help, maybe there's a project here, oh, there might be some money. So that would be my first instinct on a project like that is look at the MS4 permit for the city of Glendale and poke around with regional water quality and just see if there, if there are runoff issues associated, say, with the last series of rains and yeah, what pollution might have come from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many unu unused parking lots um, that are in private hands. And so, they, oh, we can't touch those because I took, uh, took photos and, and sent them to them. And and also like where we could just open up uh, this, this space and or plant like in between like those medians, plant trees and um, in it. so many areas. And um they said, oh, we can't touch, oh, if it's owned privately, we can't do it. I said, what? You, you could just let that sit there for 10 years or 20 years, asphalted, nobody's using it. That is such a waste. I mean, there must be something to force someone because of the state that we are in. We yes. need the water in the ground. Yes, and so figure out who ultimately is liable for the pollution yeah. that runs off there is okay. going to be the key. Yeah, okay, And thank if you. we pull that thank hook, you. right? Yes. Thank you. That's what I was saying to, to Terry earlier, too, in mm -hmm. terms of the district, right? Like, think about that stormwater side of things or think okay. about the water regs. Like, water is a lot of, yeah, it can be the real impediment to a lot of, yeah. you want to be a little bit, you don't want to, you want to be, you want to be nudging and a, a little bit annoying to the city, but you also want to be a little bit 
dangerous and scary too sometimes so you want to have like a piece of information where they're like uh oh, don't you said ms4 no 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 oh this is not that uh and then you suddenly end up so yeah happy to help you all follow up and be sort of this is a game of sometimes you have to be a detective on your own in your own jurisdiction and these things aren't easy and so i i relish the opportunity to brainstorm a little bit hopefully it helps and thank you and I, no, can i just give you guys one last uh for the since sure. i i wanted to wait till the end because only like the super hardcore climate reality folks and local folks <laughs> would stick around but um can i uh can i share just a, a little piece of information before i sign off yeah do you want to you want to share a screen um no screen okay um, go ahead just a little a uh, little sneak preview so um we haven't again we haven't publicly announced this one to the world um so don't go posting about it you this is the insiders chat here okay um but every year um in california there's there's um there's uh for every district there's a nonprofit honored as the the nonprofit of the year and it's a really competitive process and there's a lot of different submissions and whatever, as you know, thousands of nonprofits, but you'll happen to be on Zoom um, with San Fernando Valley Climate Reality Project, which will be um, the nonprofit of the year for this region coming up here. So, wow. Um, oh my you, gosh. You oh my are. Gosh. Uh, that is absolutely, it's, it's, it's that is awesome. It's fantastic. So, for all the phone calls you make and all the work <laughs> you do and all the deep dives you take and all these Zoom calls and everything, it's very special what you have <laughs> built here. I, I have learned so much from you and um, I just, yeah, you become now a, a state, like you're, you know, you're Sacramento firepower now. This isn't just some... <laughs> mom and mom and pop operation here so that anyway. is so amazing thank you so much for honoring uh our work in that way and we we really value this partnership and uh you know just always we're here for you let us know how we can continue to support uh what you're working on and and we're keep it up keep it ask, up and we'll ask for we'll, your support and the things we want to see happen as 100%. well percent i'll go nudge around and be a, a good environmental lawyer to you all when i can and run around and just work really hard and um yeah so i'm i'm so grateful and and That's wonderful, we'll um dude. so sneak preview tonight on the we, we won't we won't get it Zoom. out on media social media exactly yet, we'll we'll make you. a whole splash and you know we'll go tell vice president gore his vision turned out to be kind of a good one <laughs> turns out that would be really cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time tonight. We okay. all really appreciate it. I know there were some questions in the chat, but we can always maybe forward some of those. Easy. Often yeah. and, and, and make sure it. Ross uh, and Maddie drop their yeah. uh, info in the chat too. And then as always, you guys can just track me down. Uh, where can I enter something here? Yeah. At Henry Stern CA. Let me see if I can. Where did my chat go? Here we go. Yeah, so if something else comes to mind, I'm really reachable. Um, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to go check. I think my daughter just woke up. I really yeah, I yeah, you have crying. some daddy duties here. But thank you so much for spending the evening with us. We really appreciate it. I loved it. Thanks I loved it. Thanks for sticking things. around, you guys. All right. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Stern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep, keep calling. I'll, I'll, I'll hear you if I don't see you. Okay. <laughs> right. Hey, thank you. Thank Baby, you. Yeah. That's great. Hopefully this is okay back there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everyone for thank all that you, you do. Keep, uh, keep up the good work. We're very proud of everything you're doing. Thanks for joining us tonight.